Have you ever not done something that you really wanted to do because you felt nervous or anxious about it? Like maybe going skydiving or traveling around the world to a country whose language you don't speak. Or maybe something more day to day, like asking someone on a date or just stepping out of your comfort zone and doing something that you wouldn't usually do. When you don't do these things, when you don't face your fears, anxiety has a tendency to grow. And this is explained by something called the cycle of anxiety or the cycle of avoidance. The first step in the cycle is anxiety. This step begins when you're first confronted with that thing that makes you feel nervous or afraid or anxious. When you're confronted with this, you start to develop these uncomfortable symptoms. These are the symptoms of anxiety. Things like a racing heart, butterflies in your stomach, sweating or trembling, or just thoughts of being overwhelmed or afraid. When you start to feel these symptoms, the key point is that you really want to get away from them because they're so uncomfortable. You just want those symptoms to disappear. The second step in the cycle of anxiety is avoidance. When those symptoms of anxiety get to be too much, too uncomfortable, it becomes really tempting to find a way to get rid of them. And the easiest way to do that is to just avoid whatever's causing them. Now, physical avoidance is one way to do this, and that's just to remove yourself from that situation. So, for example, someone who doesn't want to give a presentation at work or school, they might skip class or call in sick to work so they don't have to do it. Another form of avoidance is emotional avoidance. This is when someone faces that fear, but they find a way to suppress that anxiety or the emotions that go with it. A good example of this is someone at a party who's shy, doesn't really want to talk to people because they're nervous, so they drink until that anxiety goes away. That way they can avoid the uncomfortable emotions. Now, avoidance isn't always bad. Most of us have a healthy level of fear about things like snakes. We might not go stomping around in tall grass because we don't want to get bitten. And in those cases, avoidance can actually be a good thing. The third step in the cycle is short-term relief from anxiety. What this means is a person's made that decision to not face their fear and it works. They get that relief, those symptoms, they go away. You make the decision to skip your presentation, you get to stay home, lie on the couch, watch TV, and it feels really good. The problem is that relief, it's short-lived and it has costs that come with it. If you skip work, someone else is gonna get that promotion over you. You skip school, you're gonna get worse grades. If you don't ask someone on a date, you might miss a great opportunity. This brings us to the fourth and final step in the cycle, which is long-term anxiety growth. What this means is you've avoided that thing that caused the anxiety, the symptoms went away, and the anxiety lessened, but then in the long-term, the anxiety actually grows. This is because when you avoid something, the brain learns a simple lesson. It learns, when I skip school, I feel good. When I skip work, I feel good. When I don't face my fears, I feel good. Every time you do that, it becomes more and more ingrained, and you become more likely to avoid something in the future. To break out of the cycle of anxiety, all you have to do is face your fears. Of course, this is easier said than done, but every time that you face them, it becomes a little bit easier. Your brain learns the opposite lesson. It learns, I faced my fear and it was okay. Now a mental health professional can help you with this by gradually exposing you to those fears in a safe way, starting with something smaller and working your way up. If you practice this enough, you can overcome your anxiety.